All right, I've given you enough time. I waited a few days, so spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I am talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, and I am not holding back. All the spoilers are coming out. You have been warned, because we about to get into this, because oh my gosh, <laughs> this movie, and it's spoilers, and it's cameos, and it's everything. Woo! Obviously, I like the film. <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious. I'm probably also gonna go on a bunch of tangents with this video, it's all going in. Let's just get into it. Deadpool and Wolverine. I saw the movie. I actually saw the movie before it came out. One of my friends was doing press and was nice enough to bring me along as a plus one, which was very nice. That's also why I was very, very careful talking about this movie before it came out because look, I respect you, okay? I want you to have the same experience that I have when I see these movies, whether I see them early or see them opening day or even see them a few days after they come out. I'm not gonna go out on the internet and talk about any spoilers or even give any hints to any spoilers. I'm not gonna tell you how many cameos are in it. I'm not gonna put little pictures up on social media and be like, oh, can you tell from this picture? <laughs> no, I got to experience a certain way. I want you to have that chance. So I just gave a little hint out there that obviously I like the film because I'm a Marvel <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and even when they do me wrong, I'm like, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> I still love you. I saw Secret Invasion, but we still good. It's okay. We'll try again. We won't talk about Quantum Mania. That just never happened. I mean, Marvel's acting like it never happened, so we'll do the same. But no, seriously, obviously, I had a great time with this movie, so I want to be sure that you had a time, so I didn't want to talk too much about it. But now that it's been out, oh man, just it was just so fascinating to see Deadpool in the MCU. Something I thought would never happen. Not only didn't think he would ever be in the MCU, but definitely not in the MCU as an R-rated film. We gotta put that in mind. This is a Disney released Marvel Studios official R-rated movie with Deadpool, also bringing Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine, who we thought we'd never see as Wolverine again after Logan. They did all of that in this movie, and that is super impressive before even adding all the cameos and extra stuff that they did with this movie as well. <sighs> so cool. Now, of course, the big conversation that was happening before this movie came out is Logan seemed like a fitting in to the Wolverine, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine legacy. Would we be tarnishing the legacy by having him come back in Deadpool and Wolverine? That's why I think the first scene in this movie, the opening sequence and opening title credits, was perfect and absolutely going, yes, we are gonna tarnish it. <laughs> We're literally going to take his body, his bones from his dead body and rip them apart and use them as weapons against the TVA to the tune of NSYNC's Bye Bye Bye, complete with Deadpool dancing along while using his bones, his corpse, his skull. <laughs> It's like, you know what? If you're concerned we're gonna turn into legacy, let's just go all out with it. But I think that was actually a smart move. I think this was a perfect way to set the tone for this movie of like, yes, I know you have these emotions and feelings about Logan, but I'm sorry, we are here to rock out and have a good time. So let's just go ahead and make it so insane of using his body as a weapon to just get that out of your mind. You find that so funny. So now you're forgetting about the whole like, oh my God, the legacy of Logan and move forward. There's also a couple other scenes in the movie that kind of hit at that too, like when they're watching a clip from Logan and people are literally mouthing the words and stuff like that. It was like they understood how much people had emotions for that movie, but also understood how fun it would be to have Wolverine come back for this movie. And I'm so glad that they did it. And I also appreciate that they set that tone with the opening scene. Plus, it's also just a nice reminder that this ain't real history, y'all. This is this is movies. Movies gonna do what movies gonna do. If movies wanna make another one, they gonna make a sequel, they will figure out a way to make that sequel. They will figure out a way to bring that character back. Not to mention, we're also basing these on comic books, which are notorious for bringing characters back. Bringing characters back from the dead, having characters come back from other universes, even having actors come back and play completely different characters in the same universe. New masks, same task. But I'm so glad that Hugh Jackman came back and worked alongside Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool and Wolverine because that combination, not only is something that we've always wanted to see in a movie, but it also proved time after time with this film how great of a combination that is. The chemistry that those two have together, it is a buddy cop show, it is a bromance, it is everything I wanted to see from those two, with Wolverine being so serious, gruff bub, and Deadpool, of course, being Deadpool with the jokes and the fourth wall breaks and the innuendos the entire time. That chemistry was so good. This is what's good when Marvel does comedy right, because they understood that the character of Deadpool is what makes Deadpool work. And they let Deadpool be Deadpool while the other characters around him 
stayed who they were. Let Deadpool break the fourth wall. Let Deadpool do all that kind of humor. Everyone else be normal around him. And so I think putting him next to Wolverine was perfect for that. Wolverine, of course, had a couple of jokes here and there, but he also stayed in character. He didn't break the fourth wall or anything like that. So it made sense that Deadpool was Deadpool, Wolverine was Wolverine. And just the whole time that they're having to work together while also Wolverine just getting so sick of Deadpool shit. I was just loving that. That one scene in the car when Wolverine just tells Deadpool off, just talking him down. You are the worst person I've ever met. I hate you. You're so messed up that you couldn't even keep a relationship with a stripper. You should be dead. But the funny joke is you can't die and you're stuck here with me. I was like, damn, man, Wolverine just read him to Ew. And then Deadpool's like, I'm gonna fight you now. And they fight in the car. <laughs> they have a whole inside car fight to the tune of, you know what did I want? <laughs> they were just great, man. They were just great together. But, but even before Deadpool and Wolverine team up, the whole montage of Deadpool looking for Wolverine and seeing all the other different Wolverines, that was really cool. I love they had the comic accurate short Wolverine. They had Wolverines from different comic book covers and comic book stories. They even had like a little nice nod to Hulk versus Wolverine, which I would love to see that as a whole thing. I wish that part of the montage was actually a sequence just to have some more classic Hulk in there. That'd be really cool. And then of course, the freaking Henry Cavill Wolverine, which when I saw that, I was like, you know what? <laughs> He ain't Superman no more. <laughs> and Hugh Jackman may not want to play this character anymore. I'm just saying Mr. Witcher might want to like roll up in the Marvel Studios and be like, hey, Feige, you know, that was a fun cameo and all. But, you know, <laughs> you know, man's got to eat. <laughs> I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it because he looked good as Wolverine. I was like, go ahead, Cavill. Yeah, yeah, I like this. <laughs> this works for me. Yeah, that whole part of the movie was very, very fun. I really liked that. But, of course, he then meets the worst Wolverine. And what I liked about this movie, too, as much as it could be whack, and comical and fourth wall breaking and R-rated and action blood fest and all the cameos and everything. I appreciate the movie did try to have some heart into it. Maybe if it wasn't so stuffed with so many other things, those parts of the story that were trying to hit a little bit more to the heart, a little bit more to the dramatic side would have hit a little bit harder, a little bit stronger. But I really appreciate that they still kept that in there. I love the whole part about Deadpool when he was doing all his traveling around uh, from the end of Deadpool 2 that he stopped in the sacred timeline and tried to join the Avengers. They rejected him and that that somehow hurt him so much that he was like, I just give up, doesn't want to be a superhero anymore, isn't really doing well with his relationship to the point where it breaks up. And then with Wolverine, of course, they were having the whole thing of his X-Men died, he went berserk, went a full Anakin Skywalker episode two and three <laughs> on humans. And so he felt like the worst Wolverine, but this was now his chance to prove himself, have redemption. And we got some nice dramatic moments of that as well, especially when Cassandra Nova went inside of his head and he had to really like focus on that when he talked about it to others. I thought that was really cool that they put that in there because that's something they could have just left out. Could have just made the whole movie a pure fan service fest but I feel like they were at least trying to still incorporate a lot of the elements that made the first two Deadpools work, even though they were still doing this whole thing of having him in the MCU, having all these cameos, having all these things going on in addition to Deadpool and Wolverine being there together. That was really nice. And boy, does this movie have a lot of Deadpools. <laughs> you got a lady Deadpool, a head pool, a kid pool, a baby pool, a dog pool. Oh my gosh, dog pool is so freaking adorable. There's plushies of that dog, right? There have to be plushies of dog pool out there, tongue and all. Uh, so that was like, and of course, old freaking nice pool <laughs> always coming back and taking dog pool away. And I love the whole thing of like nice pool being used as a shield. And <laughs> Deadpool's like, you regenerate, right? And he's like, regenerate. <laughs> I was like, damn. I literally in the theater was like, damn. <laughs> You're gonna live. You're gonna live. <laughs> They just had some really nice bits with that. I, I really enjoyed that. And then that whole sequence as well, man, them going through the string of Deadpools while Madonna's singing Like a Prayer. I thought that was really great. I love the part when all of them ran towards Deadpool and Wolverine and then they all get pushed back while Wolverine's just stabbing and Deadpool's behind them pushing. It's just like a lot of the action in this I thought was really good. Just, just in general, man, the action sequences in this movie were really, really well done. And what I liked about this movie specifically, they talked about this a while back when people were leaking photos. They were like, look, we do not want to do this all on a green screen. We want to have outside sets. We want to have practical sets like the whole TVA 
scenes, all those sets were real practical sets. The stuff they shot with Deadpool and Wolverine fighting, those were all outside real sets. I really loved that because you could feel that in the movie. It didn't feel as green screeny as some other Marvel movies have felt from time to time, even some of the good ones. So I really liked that. And just the way that they shot the action scenes in this, like the whole Deadpool and Wolverine fighting each other a couple of times in this movie when they were fighting each other around the 20th century Fox sign, when they're fighting each other in that car, that whole car sequence is amazing. Um, so that stuff I thought was really well done. Sean Levy uh, really brought his A-game with this or whoever helped him <laughs> with those action sequences. You know how sometimes they'll have like second directors that will help out with some of the some of that stuff. But either way, definitely brought their A-game with this movie because I felt like this is some of the strongest action that we've seen as of late. Reminded me a lot of like Shang-Chi and stuff like that. I'm just like, oh man, I really am feeling the strength behind some of these punches and kicks, or in this case, the stabbing and the gunshots and the blood and sticking things where things should not be stuck. I thought Cassandra Nova was actually a really good villain. I was actually kind of bummed that she was taken out at the end of the movie because I was like, I could see her being a villain that could come back for other MCU movies. Like she was really, really good. I think that she might have shined a little bit more if she was in a movie that didn't have so much other stuff going on, obviously. But I thought every time she was there, I felt her presence. I thought that she was definitely a threat. Obviously, everyone was like, you either work for her or you stay out of her way. It was a very good performance of Cassandra Nova. Also, Paradox was pretty cool. I felt like Paradox went a little over the top sometimes in the movie. Uh, which I don't know if that was just supposed to be a way of his character or what, but there was a couple of times I was like, all right, it's a little too much. Now you're kind of coming off almost like snidely whiplash, you know, like, like twirling mustache villain, but you know, that's kind of what he was. So I get it, but it didn't bother me that much. And I especially like when Cassandra Nova showed up, did the whole weird thing where she's got hands and fingers going through people's heads. Like that stuff is like, oh, that got me the whole time. I was like, Ugh. one of the greatest characters in this movie is the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> they did a really good job with the music in this movie. I especially love that it was a nice mix of your pop hits. You know, they definitely knew how to drop some needle drops up in this one, but they also still had some really cool score in this as well. That one score that, that, that one, that was really good, especially when they brought in those cameos that one scene when they're all coming in one by one and that score is going off in the background, I was like, oh yeah, let's go, let's let's go, let's fucking go. Let's just get into it, man. That's the big thing about this movie, obviously, is these big time cameos. We had Happy Hogan, of course, up front to reject Deadpool, not allow him in the Avengers. We had that shot that they were showing in the TVA of Thor crying. Why was Thor crying? We don't know. I'm guessing that's something we'll find out in like Doomsday or Secret Wars or something. But, you know, Thor's crying for some reason. But the big one, man, the moment they reveal Chris Evans and everyone was all cheering like, oh, Captain America. I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I knew, I knew, I knew. I usually don't do the whole like, I know. But the moment that dude showed his face, I'm like, that ain't Captain America. I know exactly who that is. <laughs> I know exactly what they try to do here. Make us think that's Cap. And the moment that dude went flame on, I was like, yeah. Well, that was fantastic. <laughs> I was so excited because I was like, if there was ever a reason to bring Chris Evans back, particularly for Deadpool and Wolverine, which we all kind of thought might have happened because the same director of this did Free Guy. Chris Evans had a cameo in Free Guy. So I was like, oh, come on. He has to do it. So that was really cool. I was so happy because I that's what I thought when he first popped up on the screen. I was like, he's got to be Human Torch. He's got to be Human Torch from the old Fox Fantastic Four movies. And he definitely was. That was so wonderful. <laughs> that made me so happy. And then his post credit scene. So Deadpool was all like, oh man, Human Torch. He's been saying all these bad things about you, Cassandra. He's like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And so when Deadpool plays that footage back and you just see Chris Evans, Sweet Captain America as Human Torch, just dropping all these curse words and and all these horrible things he's saying about Cassandra. That was a wonderful. That was a wonderful post credit scene. Doesn't expand to what we could see future in the MCU, but definitely a fun way to cap this movie specifically. To cap this movie, I did not mean to do that. I'm sorry for that pun. You also had the return of Pyro and Sabretooth and some X Men cameos. The X Men cameos, I will be honest, was a little odd. It threw me off a little bit at first because they had some people that. 
that were legit from the past movies, like Pyro. I think the Sabretooth was from the original X-Men. But then there were other characters who were like X-Men characters, but they weren't being played by the actors that played them. So there was a couple times I was like, oh, is that supposed to be? Um, yeah, so I just, I thought that was very interesting that they wanted to at least reference some of the X-Men characters, even if they didn't have all the actors to play them. But the big one, man, the big score. I'm just calling them the Fox Avengers. <laughs> but the whole team up of Jennifer Garner as Electra, which look, I don't know what it is, but I remember Jennifer Garner from Electra back in the day. And I was like, oh, she's cool. And I've seen Jennifer Garner and other things. I was like, oh, she's cool. Something about when Jennifer Garner walked out as Electra in this, I was like, hold on. <laughs> I've not felt this way before. <laughs> This is new. <laughs> I might need to explore this. <laughs> God dang, what's in your wallet? X-23 came back. That was already revealed, I guess, in the final trailer. I didn't watch the final trailer before seeing the movie. So it was funny when I was in the theater, when she popped up, <laughs> I was like, yay! And everyone else was like, oh, what fool? We already knew she was in it. We watched that last trailer and I did not see it. So I was all like, I didn't know she was in this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why sometimes it's worth it to not watch every trailer, okay? <laughs> I had my joy. I had my fun. But it was really cool to see her, especially love that part when she put the sunglasses on again and she was going off like she did in the Logan. That was really neat. But yeah, dude, these other ones, man, oh my gosh. So let's start with Channing Tatum. Channing Tatum as Gambit. So in case you don't know about this, some context. Back in the day, years ago, there was constantly talks that there was gonna be a Gambit movie with Channing Tatum starring in it. Um, this was supposed to happen, I think, after X-Men Origins, because X-Men Origins, Wolverine had, a, what's his name, Taylor Kitsch, wasn't it, as Gambit? But there were talks about Channing Tatum being Gambit. This has been going on for a while, but it never got off the ground. And of course, eventually, Fox got bought by Disney and they stopped all X-Men stuff. There was supposed to be a second part to that Dark Phoenix movie. They were just like, nope, we're done. We'll take care of these ourselves. <laughs> so we never got that Channing Tatum gambit. So I thought that was a really smart idea. Channing Tatum was also a cameo in Free Guy. So it made sense to have him come back in this movie as well with the same director and actor of Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy. And so to have him come and play that gambit that he never got to play and then make a whole bit about his Cajun accent and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> that was really, really good. That, that made me very happy. I really liked seeing that. But man, the cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine, that got me, that had me screaming. And if I could, I would have ran up and down the aisles. Wesley Snipes, comes back as freaking Blade and I lose my shit. Blade was this movie. I need to go back and watch it again because this is what I didn't really know a lot about Marvel in general. So when I saw Blade, I didn't even connect it to it's a Marvel movie. I just connected it as here's a cool movie where Wesley Snipes plays a badass vampire going up against evil vampires. He's half man, half vampire he has all their strengths none of their weaknesses and he just looks so cool the entire time got his shades on throwing things saying things like some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill and all that kind of stuff like he was just so awesome every time he would do a pose i would just under my mouth go solid <laughs> i was just so happy when you see that movie didn't even recognize oh yeah blade's a marvel character so when you think about it when you think about x-men spider-man the MCU, Blade was there. Blade was there before all of it. Blade needs that credit, man. And so to see him in this movie, getting that credit, Wesley Snipes still looking badass after all these years, fighting and everything. Something about that just made me so happy. Like just something about that. I felt like Blade was getting the recognition he deserved by having him in this film, doing him this way. I love the little end joke where... <laughs> Wesley Snipes tells Ryan Reynolds Deadpool, I don't like you. And he was like, you never did. That goes back to a little bit of an in-joke about the third Blade movie where Ryan Reynolds was in that movie where it seemed like it wanted to focus more on the team. I've never seen that movie, actually. I think I've only seen the first Blade and parts of Blade 2. I should do a Blade run. 
Blade Run, and, and then the whole line of him, there's one blade, and there will only be one blade, and then Deadpool just looks at the camera, but, you know, given the production schedule of that proposed Mahershal Ali Blade movie, <laughs> he might be right. <laughs> we may never have another Blade. <laughs> you know what? When Secret Wars comes up, just call Wesley Snipes. Don't even worry about trying to introduce a new Blade at this point. You can do it after the fact when you reset everything. Just go ahead and have Wesley Snipes be Blade for the rest of this franchise. <laughs> that's fine with me because he was awesome, man. That was just so cool. That just really was like, that's that's nice. That's nice because everyone always talks about, oh, the X-Men movies started what we see today or the Spider-Man movies or even, you know, the Nolan Batman and all that kind of stuff. But I'm like, don't sleep on Blade. And I think that's what made Blade work. Sometimes a movie just being a good movie that happens to be in the MCU or happens to be a superhero movie, that can have a larger reach. We got this cool character. We got this great actor playing this cool character. We're just gonna make a badass film and everyone's gonna like it. And if you just happen to be a fan of the Marvel comics, then double points for you. I just, <laughs> just can't, I just can't emphasize how freaking awesome that was when I saw him on screen. And then their whole fight sequence, when they go back, to Cassandra Nova, bring them out, bring them out. And freaking, they come out of the car, Wolverine slow-mo out the back trunk and they just are standing together. And then they get into that battle. That battle was legit. Everyone got their time to shine. It was so awesome. I also love the part of the end where they're playing the very like, do say again. And they're like jumping up into the portal and all the other characters looking up. It was just such a nice heartfelt moment. It just felt like a nice love letter to those past movies. I felt like that was the whole tone of this film was it was just giving love, respect to those pre-MCU Marvel superhero films because they did pave the way. Even though not all of them were great, even though all of them had their ups and downs, even though some of them had a good start, had some weird sequels, or they just fizzled out completely fan four six style, they still were there to make something like the MCU happen. They walked so the MCU could run, as they say. And so I think to have a movie to celebrate that, especially after the Fox Disney purchase, I think it was so nice for them to have this movie to celebrate that, particularly to celebrate that within the MCU, because it was just nice to see that. I mean, that's even where Kevin Feige got his start was with these movies. So these past uh, pre-MCU movies. So I thought that was really nice that they did that, especially that whole ending thing they did where they had the time of your life playing with all the old clips from the movies and seeing the actors on set behind the scenes and have them do uh, interviews where they're talking about, oh, you know, I'd love to play this character again sometime. Uh, just that, uh, I don't know why that made me a little sentimental, but it kind of did. <laughs> it really did. It really did. So that was very nice. I love that. So that whole sequence was nice. It was nice seeing those. Love the joke about um, <laughs> Daredevil dying <laughs> and Deadpool goes to Electra. So sorry, it's all right. <laughs> Deadpool had some rough ones, man. Like where he was like Wolverine, he usually is shirtless, but he let himself go after the divorce. I was like, damn, <laughs> shots fired. But yeah, that Electra joke really got me with the Daredevil. <laughs> so, so sorry, that's fine. <laughs> Of course, when you're looking at all the cameos they got, it's not hard to be like, well, I wish they would have got this person. I would love to see Halle Berry come back, you know, or any of that kind of stuff. But you know what? They got who they got. I feel like it made it work. I feel like if you would have gotten too many of the cameos, then it might have been too much. Not every character had their chance to shine. I think they specifically got some that made sense. Thought it was a nice mix. But you know, I, I, if Halle Berry would have wanted to show up as Storm, I, I think I would have been fine with that. I love that sweet part at the end where they're holding hands, trying to break that machine up and you got that matter and antimatter going through them and you just have those clips back and forth of Deadpool looking at his past, Wolverine looking at his past. Wolverine putting on the mask. Oh, I can't even believe I didn't talk about that. Oh my gosh. We got to see not only comic accurate costume Wolverine, but also with mask. Oh, oh. We saw this on the screen. <laughs> we saw this on the screen. <laughs> this mask. <laughs> Not the mouth, but the mask. <laughs> Don't ask why that was so close to me and down there. That one dude that's just like had that secret feelings for Deadpool and then when Wolverine came out with <laughs> his shirt off and he's just like, that was good. The whole, uh, the woman from uh, Loki meeting Peter and being like, you look damn good in that suit. Just like all those random things like that. There's just so much good stuff in this. And I know 
that no matter how much fun I'm having and many people are having, there's got to be somebody out there because it's the internet to be like, it's not that great. It's just a bunch of fan service. Can I just say this? What is wrong with fan service? Isn't that the point of it? To service fans? It's always weird to me that people try to make that a negative. Oh my God, they just want to do things that would make fans happy and applaud. Well, damn, I am so sorry that the movie decided to do some things that we'd actually like. How dare they? The same thing happened with the Mario Bros. movie. Oh, they just put a bunch of things in there to be fan service. And if they didn't do it, you wouldn't complain about it like you did in 1993 with a cinematic masterpiece to Mario Brothers with Bob Hoskins. It's either they do too much fan service or not enough fan service. We are living in an era <laughs> where Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, Hugh Jack Wolverine just had a fight with Jennifer Garner Electra, Wesley Snipes Blade, Channing Tatum as Gambit against Charles Xavier's sister from the womb <laughs> in a multiverse where they're even making jokes about how Marvel's not doing great sometimes. <laughs> With Madonna singing, <laughs> R-rated from Disney, Walt's turning in his grave, <laughs> except he probably said a lot of the same words. <laughs> All this happened. What? <laughs> what else do you want? And look, I'm biased because this is coming from a man who squealed like a baby when they put Donald Duck and Daffy Duck next to each other in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So, you know, my standards of seeing the cameos and the collaborations happen like this don't happen very often in my upbringing. So when they're happening now, I'm going insane. Could the story have been better? Sure. Not as convoluted, streamlined a little bit more? Absolutely. There could have been some tweaks here and there to make the story flow a little bit better. Does it hit the emotional cores like the first two Deadpools did? Not really. And it definitely doesn't hit the emotional level that Logan did, but it was still a fun, entertaining movie. And I was able to follow it from beginning to ending without it feeling like I was too lost or worried so much about the MCU dynamics and just enjoyed the time that I was having. I got to just experience the movie that I was seeing in front of me instead of worrying about the universe as a whole. This was meant to be pure enjoyment, pure fun. And that's exactly what I had. And I feel like the excitement, the noise, the box office <laughs> is very clear and indicative that people are gonna have a good time with it. People will come to the theaters to see it. This is a see in the theaters type of movie because you wanna have that interaction with the people around you. So will Deadpool and Wolverine return? I think so. I think they're gonna come back for Secret Wars, but also understandable if this is it. If this is the swan song for both of them, so be it. Obviously they can't do it forever, even though like they said in the movie, till you're 90. <laughs> But at some point, Ryan Reynolds cannot be Deadpool anymore and Hugh Jackman cannot be Wolverine anymore. I hope they can do it as long as they want to do it. And then once they're done with it, I look forward to whoever is going to fill those outfits in the future. But obviously some big outfits to fill. So I had a wonderful time with Deadpool and Wolverine. I've already seen it twice. Want to see it again. I'm asking all my friends if they've seen it. If anyone I know has not seen it, we going because I just want to be there with you when these moments happen. Um, so that was wonderful. Thank you so much for listening to all of this. I know it was all over the place, but it meant a lot to me to just have some fun with this. And if there's any movies from the past that I didn't talk about that I missed, let me know. They're all on Disney Plus, right? So, you know, I can check it out. I know I didn't see Madam Web. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I'll do it for you if you watch. I'll do it for you if you watch. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000.